Good. Yes, indeed. Okay, here we go. Welcome, everybody. Um, we were sort of um, kiddingly calling this congratulations. You got a grant now. What uh, the session? Um, because you all, uh, those especially those who are new to receiving state funding, there's a there's some paperwork involved, um, and there's some uh, you know questions that are are pretty common, and so we thought we would use Zoom technology to see how many we could address all at once. Good to see you all. I'm Karen Geshko. I'm the Assistant Director at the Wisconsin Arts Board. And with me from the Arts Board are... I'm Caitlin Burrell. I'm the Folk and Traditional Arts Coordinator here at the Arts Board. And I'm Dale Johnson, Grants and Information Specialist here at the Arts Board. And you all, if you haven't spoken with Dale yet, you've just got a sense of the calm and soothing tone <laughs> that he uses when things uh, sort of go off the rail and people need a little reassurance. So um, now you have a face to put with that voice. Um, so I'm going to ask that we go around and I'm just going to call on people from the screen since we have about 45 minutes to connect here on all of this stuff. And we have a... a a good number of people to just simply do a quick intro. So I'm going to ask you to give your name, even if it is on your screen, um, the organization that you're with, the community that you're, the geographic community that you're uh, with, and then um, whether you got an arts education grant, a folk arts grant, or a local arts grant. And once we go through that, then we'll uh, we'll start sharing some screens, going through some paperwork, and taking um, taking your questions and hearing some some answers. Um, so, first on my screen is Ryan. Excellent. Ryan here, uh, representing Reba and Allen Centennial Gardens. Um, we are in Madison, Wisconsin, and I believe it was a folk arts grant. Thanks, Ryan. Carrie, you're next. Carrie, Carrie or Terry? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. Carrie Walton. <laughs> Hi, Carrie here. I am with Prairie Music and Arts in Sun Prairie, and we got a an education grant. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Um, the Warehouse. Okay. Hi, I am Donna Murray, and I am coming at you from Eagle River, Wisconsin, and I believe we got um, the Folk Arts grant as well. Thank you. Scott Mahogany Gallery. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Uh, my name is Scott Terry. I'm with uh, uh, well, two entities, Mahogany Gallery and Mahogany Black Arts and Cultural Center, uh, located in uh, Racine. And um, we've got the local arts uh, grant. Thanks, Scott. Lisa. I can't hear you. Oh, there you are. Is it working now? Yeah. Fabulous. All right. My name is Lisa DeGeer. Uh, I'm the Water Resources Coordinator with the City of Superior in the City of Superior. Um, and uh, we received a Creative Communities Grant for Storm New York. Local Arts. Yeah. Thanks, arts, Lisa. Yeah. All right, Terry. This time it's Terry with a T. Yep. Um, I'm Terry Murphy with Artworks from Milwaukee. We're in Milwaukee, the city, the city of Milwaukee, and we received a Creative Communities Grant. And I think I heard Lisa say they're doing storm drain art. So I'm going to have to connect with you because we're also doing that. Yes, that is one of the reasons to get you all together on a call mm -hmm. if we can. Thank you. And Terry Gamble, please. Hi, I'm Terry Gamble. I'm with the Boys and Girls Club of Kenosha down here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, and we received an arts grant. Uh, arts Ed? Yes. Arts Ed, yep, awesome. Megan, Superior again. Yeah, hey, I'm Megan. Uh, Lisa and I are working together on this project, so we figured we'd have um, a joint effort here. Uh, yep, City of Superior, uh, I think like the northwestmost point of Wisconsin. Yep. Indeed, arts. indeed and draining that storm water. Thank you. All right, Philip. Hi, everybody. I'm Philip Matthews. I'm with the Worm Farm Institute. We're based in Reedsburg, but we serve all of uh, rural Salt County, and we received a local arts grant for a project in Plain, Wisconsin. Thank you. Deborah. 
Hi, I'm Deborah Karp, and I am um, in Racine. Well, not really. I'm in Kenosha, but I am um, representing Art Root in Racine, and we received a local arts grant as well. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Felicia, can you unmute and just let, let us know sort of name, organization, community, and uh, what kind of an, a Creative Communities grant you got? Felicia Dalton from the Boys and Girls Club. I apologize for the noise in the background. I have 40 teens at uh, Mount Olympus right now. Um, but we received a creative, community, a creative arts grant for our studio. That is, that is awesome. <laughs> Your background and the reality from which you are joining us. Thank you. All right, Joy Miller. Hey there, I'm with uh, McIntosh from Mount Memorial Library and the Folk Art Collective. We received a Creative Communities grant for the folk, uh, the folk art. Thanks, Joy. Yeah. Great. Gabriela, you are uh, muted. If you want to unmute and share where you're from, that would be awesome. Hello, um, I am also from Viroqua, Wisconsin, and I am part of the the collective, the Mexican Folk Art Collective, and working together like in collaboration with the Macintosh Memorial Library and Driftless Curiosity. Um, and we got the grant for the community folk arts for our Dia de los Muertos celebration. Thank you, Gabriela. Lacey? All right. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Karen and Caitlin and Dale. Congratulations, everyone. I'm from McIntosh Memorial Library in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Um, I'm here with those team members you just met, uh, Joy and Gabriella and also Trina. We are so happy that we received the Creative Communities Folk Art Grant. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Trina. As Lacey said, I'm Trina Erickson. I'm the director of the McIntosh Memorial Library in Viroqua, and we received the Creative Communities Grant for our, our uh, Dia de los Muertos event coming up in October. All right. Thank you all for taking that time. It's really helpful to just kind of get a sense of who's on from what perspective and all that good stuff. So thank you. I think what we're going to do is jump right in to, um, to sharing some of the paperwork that is involved in receiving uh, a grant award from the Wisconsin Arts Board. And then um, maybe after each piece, we'll take questions and then we'll get into maybe a larger question and answer conversation. But Dale, would you mind sharing your screen and starting off with whichever piece uh, you'd like to start with? Sure, let's see here, I've got too many screens. So I get to deal with the stuff that everybody loves the most. Um, this, These are the forms that the Department of Administration requires if you happen to be um, new to the system, before we can pay you, they have to have all of this stuff um, done just to their liking. And just, just to run down, uh, many of you may have seen these and done them already. Some may be struggling with them. I don't, I don't have the list in front of me right now. And, and, and hopefully a lot of you are in the system and don't have to deal with this. But just to run down my list of things that you need to be careful of, or they will come back to you multiple times till they're right, unfortunately. Um, the name on both of these forms, the W9 and this other one, must match exactly. I've had the Department of Administration reject these because there was a, um, an incorporated added onto the end of a name on one of them, but not on the other one. That's how picky they are. Hey, Dale, I'm going to jump in for a minute. It's only yeah. the, your screen. We, we see the, the earth. We don't see the actual forms at the moment. Can you wow, share okay. both of those? Yeah, that's what I meant. I have too many screens. Do you see it now? Nope. We did for a moment. Oh, yeah, there's the how W9. OK. So then which, guess, uh, and you were, no, it went away. It just went good. away. Um, and you were talking about two different forms, so you might want to share. Okay, we can see it again. Yeah, yep. and there's the W9, uh, and there's and then the DOA 640. Yeah, this is what's called the new supplier form okay. um, on our on our um, information, and then here's the W9. 
So this is the name field that I was referring to on, on both. It's the first line. The other thing on this new supplier form that you need to be careful of, um, this business name causes trouble. We've got to have something on this first line. We don't have to have anything on this line. The, don't duplicate your name down here. Only put a business name in if it's if it's different, if you have a doing business as kind of a name, that, that type of thing. And I guess before we go down any further on these, we should uh, I should mention the, the the actual tax identification number. For all organizations, this is going to be a employee identification number. So make sure you check that. Social security is only checked if, if it were an individual grant for, for a person as opposed to an organization. Um, we must have nine digits in here. And that, that seems self-explanatory, but I think people look over here on the W-9, they see, they see the a dash that's built into this form. And I can't tell you how many of these I get where they, they put a dash in one of these nine boxes and therefore we don't get one of the digits. Well. That's not going to work. Um, section two on this uh, new supplier form can be ignored. That is not something that needs to be done. Um, section three is another place where a lot of problems occur. This only is filled out if you want to have um, your award deposited directly into your account. Otherwise, they will default to a check. If a check is fine with you, you must click this little box over here that says to opt out. If you like a uh, direct deposit, which is, which is great, then you need to fill this stuff out. But if you fill this out, you must also attach a void check or a bank letter. And, I, and most people that fill this out don't do that. I think you just, they just don't uh, bother to read all, all of the fine print here. The other thing that trips up a lot of people, um, the uh, account number, on your void check or bank letter may have a leading zero. If you don't put that leading zero in here, they will kick it back to us and we'll have to get it back to you. So it's really just paying attention to every little uh, instruction. They must be signed. You must print your name, put a date down there on both of these forms. And depending on your uh, level of comfort with technology, there's a number of ways you can do this, but you can just, you can print these. There's nothing, uh, that, wrong with printing them out on your end, filling them out by hand and scanning them and sending them back to us. Just make sure that you check that scan before you send it back to us. I, I rejected another one just today because it was done at such a low resolution. It was, we couldn't even read the information that was, was entered. Uh, let's see if I've hit all of my notes on that. You must use our forms is the other point. Um, I think a lot of organizations just maintain a file of some W-9s and, and take them out and send them for things like this. Um, our, our Department of Administration won't accept that. Their forms are updated frequently and if you don't use their form, you won't, it won't be accepted. And we do keep um, or try our best to keep the most recent forms in, in the system. So in Smart Simple, when you access your, your organizational profile, the links there will give you um, a PDF of the forms that they will accept. Dale, would you mind walking through um, exactly how to access these forms that people need to fill out, just for the record, too, in Smart Simple? Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, after you've registered, and, and, and of course you all have because you've gone through the application process, um, you need to know how to get to them. And of course, I didn't think about this ahead of time, so <laughs> you'll have to excuse me um, while I take a moment to log in here. Thank you for doing that. While Dale's logging in, um, were there questions that you had about either of those forms as he went through them? Please feel free to unmute and ask. Could you Is clarify, any... not on the um, the W-9, but on the other form, you said you have to have a name, but it, but you don't have to have a business name. But if the business name is priority, we should put that in the top line. Sorry, I, I was a little confused about that. Yeah, yeah. I've, a number of, of forms have been rejected because they just, just they didn't put anything in this top line, and they put their name here. I, they just glanced at it and said business name. Okay, we'll put our, our organization name there. Well, 
the top line can't be blank. And if they see that top one blank, they'll just kick it back and say, I'm sorry. So are you so, suggesting that they put the same name um, for both, the organization name on both lines? Nope. You put nothing on the bottom unless it's different. Um, so you only put a business name here if it's different than your your actual legal name, which is the one that should be on your tax return. But if we're an organization, that should be our organization name if we're a nonprofit, because yes. it shouldn't be our contact name, right? It should just be our organization name. Right. This is the Correct. this is the entity that we're trying to create a record for and pay. So it's always going to be your organization for these these programs. Okay. Does thank anyone, you. Does anyone want to be a, a guinea pig and have me show you how to access your? Uh... Oh, nobody's brave enough to do that. Okay. Um, well, let's pick my my favorite fake organization, the Nuglaris Cat Farm, where I am the uh, executive director. So if you were to, I, I suppose I should, um, let's see, this is what you are all working on, creative communities. Yep. So let's just take a quick peek. My view is going to be slightly different, um, but I think what I'll do is I will pre I'll pretend, uh, I'll put on my uh, executive director role in this organization. So when you log in, you will see this kind of a screen. You, you have a home screen and you see these, these icons. You access your profile by clicking this um, little circular icon up in the upper right-hand corner. And it'll have your name on it as the, as the primary contact. And when you do that, you see these profiles. The organization profile is the one that we're interested in because that takes you back to the same screens you filled out when you registered. And here is where you'll see the links to the W-9 form and the new supplier form. And they just pop up as um, PDFs, which you can then print, or again, depending on your level of technology, fill out right, right there on the screen. And then you come back to the same place and upload them and they will appear right below. And you, there's no submit function here. Once they're uploaded, um, you just click save and and I will have access to them. And this is within the organizational profile section, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, awesome. All right, thank you. I didn't mean to derail you from the, the paper going through process, but- That's okay. That's helpful. All right, other pieces of paper. Um, do you want me to get into the other forms that we need? Um, yes, please. Um, the, so, we have two. We've got the credit and logo, credit line and logo use form, yes. and we have the grant proposal revision report. And perhaps we can do that one first. Um, and while yeah, you're those those are actually going to be found in the activity itself that we're dealing with, and and the activity we're dealing with is um, the grant agreement activity. And I don't know if I'm gonna see that here if I've already submitted it, but let's see if I can go here. If you haven't submitted it, it will be an in progress item. If you have submitted it, it will be um, in your submitted area and it looks like I have. But the things that we have to have there, even though the cat farm is a bad example, in addition to the grant agreement itself, which is accessed with this button, we must have uh, the credit line and logo use form completed and signed. And assuming that your award um, is $100 or more lower than your request amount, we also require this form. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, but it's just an explanation of um, how you'll still do your project with, you know, X number of dollars less than you planned on. Would you mind opening it up so we can take a look at know. it? And yeah, we'll just do that. Um, so this is basically uh, you, your chance to say, all right, that thing that we submitted in, you know, uh, April um, uh, or March or whenever the deadline was, uh, there have been a few changes and or 
we didn't receive the amount that we requested. And so this is uh, our chance to keep, kind of update you on what's going on with the project in terms of the grant amount, our match, et cetera. And so basically you fill out your organization's name, the grant number, which you will have um, at, can you show people where the grant number is, Dale, in there? It's right at the top, right, of the, yeah, that's this. yeah. That is your grant number, um, fiscal year 23, which is uh, what will be in uh, starting July 1st. And so you put that number in, and then um, the the if you gave your project a title, and I think most of you did, this isn't, a, if you didn't, it's fine. That isn't a crucial piece of information. It just kind of helps us um, identify in one more place uh, what we're talking about here. Your name, so the person that is filling this out, um, and the, the phone number that we can get a hold of you through, um, and your email. This is, um, as long as you are able to um, sort of legally obligate the organization, uh, you are the right person to fill this out. If you're volunteering with an organization and you're just doing the paperwork, you can't actually submit this piece of paper signed saying, uh, you know, basically, this is this is the organization's update. It has to be someone who is, uh, you know, integrally connected with the organization who fills this out. Um, and basically, you're saying um, we've re revised the project a bit, and this is what it looks like now. Um, mostly, we're interested. Uh, that's not true. We are also very interested in um, if you didn't get the amount that you requested, uh, are you going to um, raise additional funds in order to make the the budget that you submitted originally work as you proposed or are you going to pull money from other resources within your organization so your applicant cash and are you going to just simply draw more um, from that resource to make the project happen as you originally proposed or are you going to have to cut some of the project um, and so if you have to cut some of the project, this is your place to describe where you'll be cutting. Um, you know, will you do less of X, Y, or Z? Or will you change things around so that you're able to get more in kind uh, from a certain area and not actually have to pay cash for that expense that was originally proposed on your budget? Happy to take any questions. Um, on this as we go forward. And Dale, I will say that uh, on this particular version of this uh, piece of paper, quote unquote, um, uh, I think we need to update it so that it there is a, there, in one of the versions, there's a check, sort of a checklist that says, we're gonna be raising additional funds from external sources, or we're gonna be adding our own cash, more of it, or we're gonna change the, the nature of the project a bit. Um, so just, yeah. I say that so that you remind me that we can update this before too long. Um, but basically, that's what this is. Who's got a question about that? I'm going to scroll here because I'm not in. If you have a, how about this? If you have a question, please just put it out there um, and don't raise your hand because I have to scroll to see hands. Karen, out of curiosity, where is that information reported back? So you're curious to know how the project is adapted or how funding is adapted. Is that just for internal purposes for Wisconsin Arts Board? Well, yeah, um, in that if, if something changes significantly, like, oh, we're no longer paying the artists or we've decided to go into housing instead of art, then we can come back to you and say, yeah, no, actually, that is not true I to the nature see. of the thing, right? So it's it's another piece of the, of the, the trail, uh, just to make sure that we're doing our due diligence, if that makes sense. Karen, I, I have a question uh, also. Um, should this be filled out like at any point so in other words, like, um, we don't know yet, but we're working, if you remember, we were funded last year, we have two murals, um, and one is not installed yet, it's ready to go, but we've had some issues with the building. Um, if we can't get it done, so by the end of the fiscal year, um, 
would we submit this or just contact you and tell you what's going on? Great question. So that was uh, something we hadn't thought about talking with you about. It's it's basically the extension, uh, the request for an extension of the grant. So there's okay. another piece um, to, for us to talk about. This, however, is filled out immediately. This is your saying, yeah, we didn't get what we asked for from you all, but we can still make this project happen and here's how. And we need that reassurance before we can send you the grant award check. Okay. But but now I'm talking about last year's grant. So, so now so so now the other piece is not for this year, right? But mm -hmm. so staying focused on this year, on this okay. fiscal year 23 grant. If you find as you as the year unfolds that you are not able to do the project that you proposed in the timeline that you originally proposed to do it, please contact us. Um, we have this lovely linked um, resource that you fill out in jot form that basically says, I'm requesting an extension for this grant. I need it um, uh, instead of ending on April 1st, I need, um, we're gonna be ending on June 1st of 2023. And so, um, and we'll be able to get you a final report, you know, within 30 days of that. And here's why this needs to happen. Um, or, uh, you know, it's you were going to have a project happen in May of 23 and something changed and you just can't get it done in that time frame. Then you need to request an extension for, you know, you can go even, you know, months after the fiscal year if you let us know in advance. It's okay. We're, we're really easy to work with. We want the project to happen in your community in a way that makes sense for you and your community. Ideally, within that original, you know, time frame that you proposed, but if you need to extend it, and heaven knows, there have been a lot of extensions in the last couple of years yeah, as we try to maneuver through things. Totally good. Just keep us posted. Okay. All right. Great. Other questions related to this one. All righty. Then let's go to the. Um, one more question: If if I already submitted this and the form did not have those check boxes on it, should I resubmit nope. with using the form that has the check boxes on it? Nope, nope, nope. That's just, it's just a little, you did it the hard way. I mean, you did it um, in a way that uh, we didn't give you all the options. <laughs> it's totally fine. And thank you very much for getting it in. Um, as long as you've told us, uh, you know, how, what changes will happen, if any, that's all we need. Okay, great, so, thank you. Yeah. yeah, Karen, I've got a question. Yeah, Scott. Um, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't quite sure where to find these. Uh, where Where is this? Can you? Yeah, Dale. Can you walk through? Sure. So once you log in, you should see a screen similar to this. And the way our system shows you the various parts of an application uh, are are the, the the main application is is in this top row under the welcome area. So this is where you'll find any current applications in progress or ones that you've submitted and that have been approved. All of the little bits and pieces that go along with an application like things like we're talking about the grant agreement activity, final reports, uh, those they consider um, uh, activities and they, sh they put them in this lower area. So you look under here where it says requires attention. And if there's something, uh, if there's a number in progress, that's what you need to pay attention to. I was looking here because in my my test organization I had already submitted it, but yours will be here. There'll be a, a one here most most likely, because that grant agreement activity will be sitting there. The slight complication we're experiencing now um, is that even though we want all of these things submitted, if you submit one or two, and then try and go back, you won't. It will be uh, here instead of here. And you also won't be able to upload any more items. We're trying to fix that for next year. But if you haven't submitted this yet, I would say just don't submit until you've uploaded all of the items that you need. If you have submitted, say, the grant agreement and or one or two other items, but there's still more to go, um, either let us know or, or we'll try and go through and look and change the status to something that will allow you to come back here and, and find it. But Basically, it's going to be in this square of your home screen under requires attention. 
So Dale, I'm going to interrupt and just say there are three things that we're going to ask you to submit before we can pay um, pay the grant award out. Um, and those three things are the grant agreement uh, form, the grant proposal revision report form, and the uh, grant credit line and logo use form. So upload all three of these before you click submit. And is submit something that they see at the bottom of the page, Dale? They would normally see if they hadn't submitted right. yet? Right, it'll be okay. here. Okay, so don't don't click submit until you've uploaded all three of them. Fill them out. Okay, and I'll yeah. jump in just to say, we also require those legislative letters. <gasps> Thank you. Oh my goodness, yes. Where do they upload those, Caitlin? Thank same you place, very much. same place. And in that you know, instruction box there, it mentions uh, those letters. Thank you. Yep, we yes. don't have buttons for those because those are just going to most likely be emails that you've sent to your representatives. Um, but yeah, those we need as well. And so just a word on that. Um, we didn't used to uh, require those. And what we found, um, for those of you who don't know, Wisconsin is 50th in the nation in terms of per capita funding for the arts, uh, in terms of public funding for the arts. Um, and that that's made even more challenging because Minnesota to our west is uh, ranked first in terms of per capita funding for the arts. So while we get about 14 cents a person um, uh, invested in the Wisconsin Arts Board's grant budget that we can invest then in all of your projects, uh, Minnesota gets $7 and some per cents per person. So there's a vast discrepancy. And one of the ways that we are working to help um, our legislators and, and other policymakers understand the, the really critical importance of the arts related work that you all do is to have you take that step of, of writing them and saying, hey, we got a grant from the Wisconsin Arts Board. Thank you for investing funds in the arts board's work because they invest in our work. And this is the difference that it's making in the community that you are tasked to serve as our legislator, you know, senator, assembly person, governor. Um, so we have found that, um, that just having you all put that letter out in the beginning um, has, uh, has a greater chance of um, providing more funding for this kind of work throughout the state in years to come. This is at least our hope. So that's why we ask for that piece. All right, any other questions related to what we talked about so far? Yeah, Karen, what is that name? What is the name of that last, uh, you talked about the credit, is that the credit line? Uh, yeah, we're getting to that one in just a minute, Scott, thanks. Okay, that's the one, so the one that you were just talking about with the legislators. Nope. No, what I was talking about there is um, when you send an email to your assembly person and your senator and your um, and the governor, keep a copy of it and then upload it here. Um, upload it as an email or upload it uh, within a Word document or whatever. We just want to see that you've sent it because um, it's a requirement. But this is this is your way of you. Don't, and frankly, you don't have to upload all three of them. Um, if you, we figure if you've sent it to one, you send it to the three that we've asked you to send it to. And so just upload a sample and that's fine. Um, so there's that piece. Uh, Megan, did you have a question? I was just uh, confirming that it's going to be an email rather than a, an actual mailed letter. Um, if, I, yeah, that's great. That's easy. If you want it to be an actual letter, do you a mailed letter? You certainly can, but I will say that that's a that's a rare beast these days. Okay. So, all Thank right. You. Yeah, sure. Okay. Seeing no other hands or unmuted, um, let's open that uh, credit line and logo use form. And again, this is your way of letting us know how you're getting the word out that um, that the Wisconsin Arts Board and National Endowment for the Arts funds that go into these grants um, are, are being acknowledged, how you're doing that. So you're putting your organization name and the grant number here again, and then you're just clicking off, you're just checking off whichever um, ways you're using to get those, to use the, the logo and credit line. Um, some people check almost all of them, some people check one or two of them, um, however you do it. Uh, this is this is your chance just to let us know how that is. And then what's on page two here, Dale? Okay, got it. 
yeah so and again we just share a link to where you can find that logo and and the um and the nea's logo too and the language that we use or ask you to use um i will tell you that for those who are like doing postcards and uh and there's not a whole lot of space there's not a lot of real estate um call us if you're like there's no way we can get that credit line on the piece that we're creating here and you know we'll we'll figure it out <laughs> All right, any questions related to any of that? All right, hearing none. I think we've covered the required paperwork. So the, 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 the beauty and responsibility of, of receiving taxpayer dollars, there's a, there's a level of accountability that you may not uh, have to deal with if you're getting something from, you know, a county, um, a uh, funder or a city funder or a private donor or whatever. Um, so, so thank you for taking that seriously and getting that stuff in. What questions did you bring about um, anything else related to this? Deborah has already uh, asked the question about, you know, what happens if you can't get the project done in the time frame you said. We have the, the grant um, extension uh, request and Dale actually would you mind sharing where people where we have that where people can go to find the grant extension um, request jot form thingy sure I think I think that exists on our website right so you need to know where your programs page is so going back to the creative communities um, grant program page where you probably originally accessed the uh, the application into smart simple back in the day so this is the whoops this is the area of uh, concern for an extension there's a link right here that takes so you can to you our... share your screen again dale it's uh, oh i'm sorry stopped. i forgot that's that okay. i had stopped that uh, that's see okay no well, i think i can Caitlin, if if Dale can't, maybe that's something you can do. And Dale, do you want me to? I have it open here. Oh, it's do just it a matter of getting the getting back to the Zoom screen so I can find the share button. There it is. So yeah, I um, click to this link right here underneath an extension, and it takes can you. you to, I'm sorry. Can you go all the way to the top of that page, Dale? Okay, so again, this is the, in our grant, um, the section of our website, you've got creative communities as one of the grant programs you can click on. So you click on that, this is the page that welcomes you. And then as you scroll down in that column on the right hand side, need an extension. Yep. Thank you. And, and that to just that, takes to you that, to a form. To that point, that's also true for your, if you've, if you've finished your project, but you're still lining up some things and you don't have everything that you want to have to uh, include in the final report, you can ask for an extension for that final report too. It is due 30 days after the end of your project. Um, but if you do have trouble within that month uh, uh, to, of submitting it, then just let us know. And then filling that uh, this out for that is also a possibility. Sorry, Dale, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to show the the, the link takes you to um, this form. Awesome. And this is just a, a short thing that you need to fill out and then submit and we'll get it and respond. Yeah. Where is the link to the report? Is the report in the actual proposal, the final report? Another awesome question from Deborah Carp. Yes, when it comes time to do your final report, it will show up as one of these in progress items again down here, but that uh, they aren't here yet because you just haven't got to that part. After you actually reprocess the payment, then I create the final report and it'll be visible there. And I do believe that some uh, with the payment, the award letter goes out and there's some instructions that will guide you there. Other questions? Thanks for sharing the screen, Dale. That was helpful. All right. Well, I've got, yeah, go ahead. Um, in terms of matching funds, right, they should not be funded by grants from other organizations that are also coming from the same, from the NEA, from the same fund. 
That's correct. So, so if you are, uh, if you've received a grant from us and you also have received a grant from another state agency, let us know immediately. Or if you have received um, funding from another federal agency, let us know that you're putting into this project. Um, let us know and we can kind of help you figure out how to, to balance that and make sure that we're not matching state money with state money or federal money with federal money, because that's a problem. Okay, um, and if I'm unsure, uh, I should probably just, because sometimes a grant doesn't necessarily say when you're applying for it whether or not they're, they sh it should say that if they're using NEA funds, but sometimes they don't make it explicit. Should I check with them before I um, apply for something if that's what I was planning on doing? Um, if, if you think you're going to, so in this case, if you think you're going to match our grant uh, with uh, some state or federal funding, um, uh, yeah, let's have a conversation um, uh, about that. We can even okay. like do it via email or tomorrow or whatever. That would be fine. Thank you, Mary Rose. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, apply, apply to your heart's content. Apply to as many state and federal resources as you possibly can. I mean, go and, and may you get them all, but we just need to know how we, uh, how we balance the matching requirement. All righty. Cindy, I see that you are um, unmuted and I think you joined uh, after we did the intros. Is there a particular question that you have? I'm just listening and sorry, I meant to be muted. Sorry, sorry. That's fine. No, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Sure, glad you're here. All right, we do not have to go straight till four. It is 3.56. And for those of you who are not doing um, uh, grant uh, projects or projects related to public art um, or and or um, working with communities uh, that um, the, the projects that are working with sort of every portion of your community, um, Caitlin, I described that really badly. Um, for those of you who feel like you got what you needed, you know, head on out and have a lovely uh, afternoon because it's gorgeous out there. For those of you who are doing public art related work, we'd love it if you would stay on for a little bit um, so we could talk uh, about maybe forming a bit of a cohort and uh, addressing some specific questions related to that. Thank you all for joining us, by the way. Okay, great. Yay. So um, I think the people that I expected to see here are here. So that's great. Um, there were there were actually, I am not kidding you, in the local arts category, um, that we were able to make 20 grants, and I would say 12 of them had a public art component related to it this time, which is just fascinating to me. And um, really underscores, A, the importance of the work that you guys are doing, within your communities and B, how, um, how you are prioritizing the real need uh, within our communities to bring people together around the creative, uh, creative engagement and uh, maybe, you know, bringing diverse voices and perspectives um, in from different parts of the political spectrum, the economic spectrum, the whatever the spectrum um, really really important to do, I think, in 2022 especially, and has been uh, for the last little while, and will be for the last little while. Um, so I just wondered if if those of you who are engaged in, in uh, public art making, um, and usually that's a visual process, right? So um, um, anyway, so if you guys want to just talk a little bit about uh, your project just a tiny bit more and and just talk about whether you have experience with public art yourself, you yourself, not your organization, um, uh, and maybe what questions you have or things that you're most excited about and kind of or maybe nervous about related to that. Um, and I'm just going to ask uh, Philip if you wouldn't mind going first because um, you've been engaged in this uh, work of punctuating the landscape with temporary public art installations for quite a while. If you could just talk for a minute about what it is you're doing. And, and yes, and I, and I also want to, I want to do a lot of listening in this conversation yeah. too. So I, I'm yeah. going to, um, I'm going to say it and also breeze through it. So um, maybe many of you know that um, for nine years now, Farm Farm has organized a project called the Farm Art Detour, 
which is a 50 mile self-guided drive where we invite both rural residents and urban visitors, neighbors, to um, come through Salt County's working farmland. And the farmland is punctuated by site responsive artworks, pasture performances, local food markets, educational field notes, and more. This year, um, Plain, Wisconsin is one of our trailheads again. This is the second year on this route through Southern Salt County. And we've been collaborating with the Village of Plain, both village leadership and also community stakeholders since uh, really 2021, um, really since the 2020 detour, but especially in these um, direct conversations since 2021 to figure out something special that we can do to highlight Plain as a detour trailhead. Um, so we have worked with them, Kramer Brothers, which is a construction company uh, based in Plain and uh, Minneapolis based artist, Christopher Lutter. Um, to come up with this idea, which is to create a 20 foot tall puppet marionette style in the shape of a farmer that will perform both weekends of the detour. Um, the farmer will be suspended from an extendable forklift provided by Kramer Brothers and operated via cables um, by uh, puppeteers on the ground. The puppeteers will be members of the community. Um, so the, the puppet will perform um, in some way both weekends and then also be on view as a stationary artwork during the 10 days of the detour. Uh, this builds on a, a performance that we did in 2020 where Chris activated a giant 20 foot tall skeleton, again, working with Kramer Brothers. Um, and so this was our first sort of collaboration with the village and Kramer Brothers in a smaller way. And they were really excited about it and loved it um, and were willing to collaborate with us in this more in-depth way where they really are shaping um, the project from the concept to the implementation. So really excited about it. Um, and thrilled to be able to, um, to highlight this really small community with a lot of assets uh, in uh, Southwestern Wisconsin. Awesome, thank you, Philip. Deborah, I'm gonna to turn to you next um, and to ArtRoot's project. Um, um, ArtRoot is a, um, well, I guess now we're actually a nonprofit of people who are trying to um, create um, make Racine um, a more um, a place that people who are creative want to live and work and where and everyone wants to live and work but because there's a lot of arts and creativity and so one of our projects is um, called uh, Art Wall Poems it was modeled after something they'd seen down in um, someone had seen down in Charlotte North Carolina and we have a group of Racine poets uh, we have actually a very active group of Racine poets and uh, the idea that this group um, basically selects um, five poets for each potential mural. And then, um, and then they pick um, five poems from each of those poets. And then they choose selections, um, uh, lines out of the poems that would be illustrated. And um, uh, those are shared with a group of students at UW Parkside in an, a graphic design course. And this is a project that the students do. And the students um, create um, designs to go on uh, site specific, uh, you know, buildings that have already been identified. And then the building owners and the people in the neighborhood are also involved in the process as the students create designs, the poets um, come in to critique the, the images. Um, of course, the art professor gives them guidance as well. Um, and then there's a committee of people from the community, um, building owners and, um, and neighbors. I mean, it, it's a, and some of the poets, I mean, it's sort of a small group of people who come together to identify which of the um, uh, designs that the students have made um, is going to be, um, painted up on the building. And so um, we are now, we did the first one as a pilot. It took a long time to get that one up. Um, that one went up in this, it went up during COVID like the 2020, but I think it was designed in like 2017. Um, but now we're moving more quickly. Uh, last year we got an, uh, a grant, a Creative Communities grant, and we got two, two of them up. Uh, no, of those, let, let me think about it. I think we're on wall poem number four or five. I, 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 we have a website, so if you're interested, do do Art Root Racine, and you can find it. And there's images of all of the um, of the murals and the process and so on and so forth. So um, anyway, that's that's the project, and um, we're going into our second year of Creative Communities Grant. But we do have. As I said, I think we're this next year it would be either five and six or six and seven of the. Hey, Deborah, uh, 
Is that something that's happening? Can you give the time frame for when the work is actually going to be created and posted, like like actually installed? Well, for last year, one nope. wasn't oh, for, this, for this coming year. For the yeah, coming year, yeah. Oh yeah. well, you know that that's always the struggle, right? Um, the, I think it's I, the spring. Are you looking for no, spring? No, we, we we would love to do one in the fall and one in the spring. That okay. that and and we were able to do that last year. We awesome. did one in the fall, but the one in the spring is the one that that's having a little bit of trouble, and we're not sure we're going to get it up this before the end of June. But Got typically, it. that's that's sort of what we're looking. And we do some community education events um, and an unveiling and so on at the uh, when they unveil the uh, piece. Thank you. And Philip, I think yours is happening in October of 2022. Um, let me turn, let's stick in the Racine area. Scott, would you mind just talking for a minute about the project that you're doing and the public art pieces involved in it? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. Where I start? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is, in a nutshell, um, it, it's a it's a big uh, community wide based mural project, uh, which is sort of an expansion from a, a mural that was done a street mural that was done in 2020. Um, it ended up being you know Racine County's like largest mural, um, uh, about two about 200 feet wide by like 25 feet tall or something like that, and um, it was pretty it was a unique project because there was a lot of it was it was literally like community based. So we had, you know, over um, uh, 100 volunteers, um, like paint the base coat. And then we had about seven artists kind of, you know, embellished them on top of that. And uh, this year, and it's with the words Black Humanity Now, and um, it's, it was sort of a response to our community's response to um the you know 2020 you know all of the things that happened in 2020 that was you know pretty a, a memorable year for all of us for sure um and so in so many levels but um uh this year uh you know the grant is to to kind of add to that come back to it but also add to it uh as well um i was really proud of the fact that you know this was a a, a community-based uh, project and at the time 2020 it was just you know grassroots you know there was no like you know organization or anything it was just um, you know just people getting together to you know make a statement uh, and this year was you know we have opportunity to kind of be ahead of the game and um, attach this to an organization and um, you know build a foundation to, to grow it and um, something we can come back to on a I'm hoping on an annual basis um and get the community involved I mean, we had such uh, community support um that was it was a great thing for the for the community to it was one thing that we could all connect to and participate in and um uh so that happened um on the street uh busy street and, and racine uh right between the courthouse and the jail um which is a unique location that we specifically targeted that location uh, for various reasons. And um, this year's component involves youth, uh, part more youth uh, participating in the painting piece, but also like the educational component of, of, of why we're doing that and, you know, the meaning behind, you know, Black Humanity Now. And then um, that's, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of other components, but that's, you know that's it in a in a nutshell and you know it's really cool to hear like what other people are doing across the state you know especially uh i forgot the brother right there the orange background uh with the puppeteers that's that's really interesting um that sounds really fun too uh, really interesting so you know it's good to hear like what other people are doing and um you know and karen i'm really shocked to hear i'm glad you told us about that funding piece of the state of wisconsin that was uh that's really eye-opening um, yeah, yeah, it's not okay. So yeah, it, no, we no. need to work together and see yeah. what we can do about that. But in the meantime, yeah. thank you, Scott. And can you talk for just a minute about there's a garden component too, right? To the yeah. to the public art piece. Right, um, right. So so behind uh, our facility here, there is a 
just an empty lot. It's just really like just nothing happening. It's, 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 you know, a lot of people go back there, like homeless people go back there, and, you know, and just, just, just really nothing happening back there. Um, so we had the idea of turning it into uh, a usable space um, that uh, open to specifically, you know, the community, but more specifically the neighborhood. Um, because where we're located physically, there's a, it's a you know big food desert. There's um, there's a lot of uh, yeah. younger families with small children in, in the neighborhood within this four or five block radius. Um, and we envisioned that this could be an outdoor gathering space, but also you know educate the the, the immediate community about um, you know healthy foods and you know it's an edible garden, and we're naming it our Romere's healing garden after Ramir Bearden, who's a, you know, prolific uh, artist you know, historically. And uh, so we're tying in art, you know, and, and food and, you know, growing your own, um, you know, plants and, and um, you know, tying all that in, in history as well, you know, so it's all, you know, all that's all connected. So we're, you know, we're using you know, some of those resources to, to help with that too. So we're really excited about, you know, this is our first time with the grant, grant can has been Phenomenal and um, just, you know, really helping us out, you know, in our first go around with this thing. So really appreciate it. Thank you. And that's going to happen this summer, right? So summer of 2022 is when you're just kicking that off. And I wanted to draw the com the, the line between your sort of uh, that food, garden and art piece and the landscape farming art piece that Philip uh, and, and Worm Farm are doing, because there's some, I think there's some really cool synergies there. So thank you both for that. I'm turning to Superior next. And can you guys describe the, the project a little bit about what you're doing with the storm drains and then um, the timeline right now for, uh, for what you're thinking? Yeah, hey, I'll jump on. Um, and Lisa, feel free to jump in whenever. Um, yeah, let's see here. Where do I start? My mind is, um, <laughs> we're in the thick of it. We're next week, we're hosting a, a community uh, uh, engagement workshop where we're involving the community in the process. Um, but the idea here is we're partnering with the Northwest Wisconsin um, Lung Health Association to pay the artists, uh, these five local artists, they're kind of returning. They've done this before. They've done the storm drain artwork before. Um, so they know how to design and install and, uh, you know, um, know that the themes are related to water quality um, and stormwater pollution prevention. And like one of the main things, reasons why we're doing this is because stormwater is one of the leading causes of surface water pollution. And so those are our rivers and our lakes, the water bodies that we drink from. So we're trying to call attention to uh, that kind of a thing. And um, and the people up here, they they want to install art. They want to be involved and they, they want, um, to talk about our water so it seems to be like the perfect thing um but we'll see you know we'll see how many people show up and um and so we're hoping to start the designing and installation of these murals um within what what day is it it's the 16th like towards the end of june early july will be the start of the installations and then they'll have the entire summer um, and they'll, along the way, we'll be um, doing press releases and getting people involved and the, the media involved so people know that this is happening um, and that the locations will be high vis. So they'll be on um, Tower Avenue and Belknap. So these are places that a lot of people will be driving and walking on. Um, uh, and then we'll have a gallery uh, open house in November with an entire month of showing the artwork. We'll take pictures of the murals and then um, hang those at the gallery. And we're still working out those details, but we've already found a band and um, a couple other things. But the idea is, yep, like community engagement and getting as many people involved as we can, um, bursting at the seams with people. Um, yeah, I feel like I missed some things. Uh, Lisa, do you think I missed anything? Uh, that was that was a pretty good overview. I think just, um, those streets that Megan mentioned are in the 
primary business districts. So making sure to get those businesses um, engaged and involved in um, water quality and raising the awareness about the connection between streets and streams. Um, and some of the printing costs in addition to um, printing uh, photographs for the gallery showing will also um, go to postcards so that students or people going to the gallery show showing can write a little clean water postcard to a friend or family member and mail that and just kind of a way for um, the murals to, to live on um, and kind of spread beyond just their location um, on the on the storm drains. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I uh, ran the storm drain art program in Baltimore, Maryland for, for four years. And this is my first um, first year working with the city of Superior. So I'm really excited to see, um, to work with this community and see how their spin on storm drain art. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and just to, and thanks for bringing up the fact that you're sort of engaging the community now, because there's, um, that is such an exciting time. Um, as a reminder, the, the grant project timeline um, starts like July 1st. So in terms of um, what you propose, like paying the artists and getting those actual activities that you talked about going, um, that should probably happen July 1st or later. Um, but the, but that pre-engagement and getting the excitement, you know, in recent weeks and now is so critical to that um, kind of critical mass of energy. It's really exciting to think of what you guys are, are doing right now. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. And, and we're really excited to have um, one of one of the awards. And um, I want to also add that we're not just saying that it's an engagement workshop. We're also including the public in the process of um, what they love about Superior and writing it down and then um, kind of whittling down those ideas into water quality topics and helping that direct the theme of the murals. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited to see what the heck happens at that workshop yeah. and um yeah so it'll be a good time but yeah thanks again and this is so fun to hear what else is happening in wisconsin i just yeah. looked up the mahogany gallery and the uh the art route like both websites are beautiful and so many incredible projects really cool it's right. an awesome group of people for sure right here <laughs> yeah i'm curious to know like if i can ask like superior so are you I've been there one time. It was I froze my butt off. It was in the, in the middle of winter time, and uh, I thought Racine was cold. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, but currently you... it's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's currently seventy degrees, so we're okay. doing all right now. All right. That was cool. That was cool. So, <laughs> how, so with the have you you started that outreach to the community yet, or you you're about to? Yeah, like today was okay. kind of the okay. outreach. Um, yeah. There's been. I mean, I'm sure you all understand it's been um, a busy time of the year, so it's challenging to get all the pieces together. Um, but we have a number of businesses and artists that we've already been in contact with. Um, and so, yeah. Just a quick question before we go to Terry. How how did you reach out to them? Like, I, I, would you be willing to, if there was an yeah. email or something, would you be willing to to share it so that other people could kind of learn from from your approach and maybe share their own again yeah, that, I, do we want to build a cohort kind of question oh yeah for sure i think i go around um doing things a little, maybe a little bit differently like one of the business owners is my neighbor and so i saw him at the greenhouse you know and then um but i like calling so i, I call people on the phone and like talk with them I do have a lot of emails that I send to, but, um, or just stopping at the business, like the, the gallery, I just stopped in and talked and got all the information I needed. Um, but yeah, I can definitely share information with you, Karen. And then if you want to spread it, sure. yeah, definitely Thank you. all about that. Yeah. And, Thank and you, can Megan. I ask real quick, is there, is there a vibrant uh, art scene in Superior? I think, um, I think there is it's growing and there's a want for it yeah, sure. um, yeah yeah there's a couple new artists that are maybe they're not new but there's some murals popping up around superior um and i yeah i kind of want to jump on that bandwagon because it's pretty cool thank you all right terry thank you for uh just jumping in a little bit with with the project that you're excited about and your timeline 
sure, and I apologize, I'm going to have to jump off because I have another meeting after this, but um, we're doing, we're also doing a storm drain art. We've never done it before, so I'm really excited. I already traded emails in the chat with Lisa and um, okay. Lisa gave Megan's, so um, we'll connect, but um, we have been doing an environmental arts internship and our program in Milwaukee um, is a paid art and skill building internship for high school students. So interns are created in community-based art projects that we create, we hire a lead artist. And then, but we're also teaching them career readiness. So they don't have to be artists, but it's like, we all want to do art. And so it's about creative expression, and confidence building, and then learning the basic skills of a job. So um, we are, it'll be the second year that we're doing um, a mosaic art project made out of plastic bottle caps. And um, so I think Karen, you asked about learning curve and concerns. We feel like we're pros now on this because last year we did this huge sign for something called Green Tech Station, which is a green infrastructure station. And um, our interns had to create a sign out of the, bottle tops that said green tech station. So there were, however long that uh, phrase is, there was a separate panel for every letter. And so they had to co collect from the public. Um, I think they wanted 5,000 bottle caps and they got more than 10,000. So <laughs> we had a lot left over, um, but they learned, you know, it was, it was definitely a trial by error and um, a learning curve because at first they thought they could glue the bottle tops to the Masonite and then they realized this is going to be an outdoor sign, so it has to be much more durable. So they had ended up having to screw each bottle cap, which meant that we had volunteers screwing holes into every bottle cap. But um, I can send a, a video. It is pretty amazing because there are lots of colors and they added a little bit of flowers and stuff like that. So we're going to work with a K-8 school this year on the northwest side of Milwaukee, which has been... Um, uh, an area that's had been a lot, had a lot of disinvestment because it used to be an industrial center with A.O. Smith and a lot of other companies. And then it was really uh, the home of the great migration of African-Americans and the companies moved out in the seventies and all these people lost their jobs. So, and then they've got environmental issues on top of that, like, you know, stormwater flooding and that sort of thing. So we're going to do um, a mosaic art piece with, or at least one piece with um, the K-8 school. And then this summer, so the interns are going to start like on designs for that this summer and fall. Um, and then the storm drain art, they're going to be working with, um, it's interesting that the people in Superior are working with the Lung Association, we're working with the uh, Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District. And um, an organization called, water, or a program called Watermarks, which is out of the city as a living laboratory in New York and water, water. Does anyone know what Watermarks does? Okay, or what they are. Um, I'm still learning, but basically um, it, they're these large um, kind of obelisk vertical installations. I, they must be made out of metal and they work with the community to pick a letter that represents the community and then the obelisk is installed in the community with a letter up top. And when the letter is, is, it lights up in a different color to indicate when it's raining. So then people learn about environmental and water issues that you don't want to do laundry or there's potential flooding or whatever. So it becomes this beacon for water quality issues. And then the same thing with the storm drain art. Um, Megan's looking confused. I don't know if that's over what I said or something else. No, I think that's that's such an interest. I'm not confused. I, I think okay. that's <laughs> such an interesting uh, project. Like, like people are looking to this, yeah, beacon for yeah. awareness. That's really cool. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things, thank you, Terry. One of the things that um, came across in a number of the proposals uh, was, a, was a wish to um, connect and engage everybody in the community like people that would not people that if you've done projects before you may have had trouble reaching or um, they they're not showing up when you do a public thing um, and so uh, so I uh, one of the reasons that I asked Caitlin to, to stick around for this whole thing other than that she's interested in all of this um, 
is just to talk, just to see if you guys have any questions about how do you reach people that are not sort of um, finding their way to you on their own? You know, how do you connect or invite or engage people from every corner of your community in the work that you want to do? If that's something you want to do. Some projects really are just meant for whoever shows up is the right person and we're going to do it. Other projects are, you know, we want, we want as many people as possible. Thank you, Terry, to be a part of this. Um, and so uh, one of the things that, that Caitlin does is kind of help people figure out how, how best to do that or, or different ways to do that. So not put you on the spot there, Caitlin, but I'm going to turn the, the mic over to you to talk just for a minute about that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the conversation and you all have mentioned this, I've heard a few of you say, you know, that ideally, if you are, you know, you're designing a project that is, you know, intended to serve your entire community, then you've intentionally been engaging a group of folks that really reflect the diversity of your community in the planning and implementation process. Um, ideally, and, and I think that, like Karen said, sometimes you're not able, there's, you know, certain communities or folks that you just haven't reached before. So as a folklorist at the Arts Board, you know, part of my, when I'm, you know, headed out to learn a little bit more about a particular cultural community, and this is so, this might be, you know, too basic of an overview for you all, but um, I think it never takes a little time to do a little research, even, you know, if you, if there's a, you know, you're interested in engaging Hmong, the Hmong American community in your project. I think that it's it's just important to really focus on being intentional with that outreach. Um, you know, when I'm going out into the field and thinking about, you know, building these relationships, I really start with building my own cultural competency and knowledge about a particular community. So do a little bit of research. And I mentioned, you know, Hmong and Hmong American communities. You know, I usually would go first to maybe the Hmong Mutual Assistance Association, maybe a maybe the Hmong Institute here in Madison, um, maybe the Hmong uh, the um, Diaspora Studies Program at the UW campuses around the state. You know, there's there's really great resources that I lean on already just to gain a little bit of context. Um, but so, and, and you all have mentioned this. So much of it is about making community con connection and. Megan, I love that you mentioned like, it's my, I don't know if this is the way to do it, but he's my neighbor and I reached out and it's like, yes, lean on, <laughs> lean on those folks. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's also helpful if there is a, you know, particular like ethnic group that you're hoping to connect with, sometimes attending a community festival or if it's a powwow or if it's a Juneteenth event coming up, I, I think that those are great ways to sort of um, grow your own understanding of a community's traditions and culture and sort of, you know, ground yourself there. And that's not to say you should make any, you know, sweeping generalizations from attending those events, but I think it's a great way to connect in with individual folks and community leaders who can then, you know, give you even more context. And at that point, you know, just ask them to, you know, can I come and sit down with you and chat about my project? And they can tell you about, you know, how relevant or not relevant um, the project might be and maybe the best ways to, to connect in with folks or needs that are on their radar that might intersect with the work that you're doing. Um, like I said, this is really straightforward, but it is just a sort of show up and listen um, approach, Caitlin, I'd say. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to interrupt for just a second because when you were talking about the Hmong American community, it reminded me um, that Wisconsin has something called the Office of Rural Prosperity. And Philip, I know you're aware of that. Um, and one of their advisors is um, a, a Hmong farmer who was dealing with some real challenges from some of his white farming neighbors. And he really talked about that and working, like when his tractor was broken, he couldn't find anyone to come and fix it until uh you know we were talking and and connected him with other right so um so i anyway he's he seems to be a really interesting um uh uh possible resource if you are and you might already be connecting in with the 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 monk farmers um 
in in the region of Sauk County. But uh, when Caitlin, you were mentioning that, I just wanted to throw that out there because I knew if I didn't, I'd forget, and then I would never mention it. So, Karen, what yeah, is his name? I can't remember, but okay. he is. Um, I can, I'll find him. Keitra Olson um, can tell you who the yeah who that advisor is. Thank you. And I was going to say, and I don't want to, Donna, I don't want to call on you at the warehouse, but you all have done a really fantastic job, I think, of, you know, for the project that you're working on, having your, the planning, you know, committee sort of reflect the community that you intend to engage with. So I don't know if you want to mention that, your work with Wayne Vallier. And Donna, oh my gosh, you guys have your screens off, so I didn't even call Thank on you. you I'm so much. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My internet is going in and out. It's very windy here. So um, when I had my face on, I figured you didn't really need to tell me or to see me. Uh, but I have been listening. But thank you um, for recognizing that. Yes, uh, Carol Amor was a wonderful resource to get both of the communities together. Uh, Wayne Valliers, uh, Ojibwa community in Lac de Flambeau. Um, and we are having just amazing experiences. Uh, yesterday, I was in the woods uh, as we tested birch bark because we're building a wigwam, a community wigwam um, on our, in our courtyard this summer. And we've, um, we're waiting to see when the birch is ready to really pop off the trees. And uh, yesterday we were there and it, it wasn't quite ready, but we're going back tomorrow. So I've got kids with bug spray and well, actually um, as young as, as young as 10 and I guess I can turn my camera on for a second, as young as 10 and as old as, uh, I don't know, 60 something, um, we, we're getting people involved in, um, we're gathering willow trees and um, uh, basswood fiber and birch bark. And um, it, we're really making, I think, some inroads uh, with the community. Tomorrow, a NAMI award-winning musician, which is the Native American Music Awards, he's playing at the warehouse. And uh, we're very excited about it. This is the second year. Uh, last year, we did Connecting with the Northwoods. And this year, it's called Living with the Northwoods, as opposed to Living in the Northwoods. So we've got environmental um, connections coming in as well. But thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk. Thank you for taking advantage of the invitation. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry I missed you earlier. <laughs> OK. It's it's 432. I was afraid this would happen. Um, I'm sure you guys have lots and lots of things to do. I want to thank you for making some time for this. Um, if you do have any other thoughts or questions that you want to share, I'll get a little email thing going um, so that you guys can connect with each other. Um, those who are focused on public art related uh, projects um, in this go around and we'll see what comes of it. But for now, any other last words uh, for the cause before we say bye? Thank you guys for your support. We're going to at least be 49th this year. We're on our way. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, there we go. Have a great one, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you again. Take Thanks, care. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.